Now with the number line, the students will hopefully be familiar with the number line using other numbers, using whole numbers, they're used to counting along the line and you know they know that's how we do it. We usually have a zero and we'll have a zero here and we're moving in this direction and we're going to add one every time. Only this time we're not going to add one whole but we're going to add a fraction. So let's do this in eighths and if we say here's a fraction that's it's more than nothing what number are we up to? Well we're up to one eighth so let's make this point on the number line equal to one eighth. Let's put another one there. What will we call that? Of course that will be two eighths. And we continue on. When we do this the students should notice that there's something not changing here. It's the denominator of course. The eight on the bottom does not change. Why not? Because that only tells us how big the fraction is. It tells us what sort of fraction it is. It gives us the name of the fraction. That of course is where the word denominator comes from. It comes from a word meaning the name for something. And we just keep doing this and we keep adding pieces and we'll do five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. What will happen when we get all eight of them? This of course is the interesting bit. It's also the tricky point in the process for the students. Sorry. When we get all eight of them, we could give that another name or we could write it down in another way. And of course that is to say it's the same as a whole. And what do we write down for one whole? If we have one object, we write down one. So what we could write here is just plain one. Now there's an alternative. We could say it's eight eighths. And that is still true. These are both the same. They're equal in value. Um, and so we'll teach that at some point. We're going to teach the difference between improper fractions and mixed numbers. Let's say we're not doing improper fractions at this point. Let's just say we're now up to a whole. So this is where we're up to. We've counted up in eighths. We're now up to a whole. How much will I have if I add another eighth? So what's the next number on the number line? Of course it's going to be one my pen's running out, and one eighth. And the next one will be one and two eighths. Clearly this is more complicated when you get past the one. We've, we've been fine up until now. I chose eighths deliberately because it takes quite a while to get up to the, the difficult part in the sequence and we can count up to eight quite easily. When we get past this um, it's a sort of a transition. It's like regrouping when we're counting in ones in base ten. When you get to the 10 you have to change the name of the 10. You've got zero on the end and then you move into a new decade. Here we're moving into a new whole. It's very, a very similar idea mathematically. It's basically the same, just using different sized pieces. And so we progressively add more and more eighths. And then we can say what happens when we get to one and eight eighths. Of course that will be two and then we'll move on. So this will give us plenty of scope for developing students understanding but the key part is this part here where we reinforce this idea that these pieces are parts of a whole and if you collect enough of them together they equal a new whole and then you can continue from there onwards.